Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari Narrated by Derek Perkins Part 1. The Cognitive Revolution 1. An Animal of No Significance About 13.5 billion years ago, matter, energy, time and space came into being in what is known as the Big Bang. The story of these fundamental features of our universe is called physics. About 300,000 years after their appearance, matter and energy started to coalesce into complex structures called atoms, which then combined into molecules. The story of atoms, molecules, and their interactions is called chemistry. About 3.8 billion years ago, on a planet called Earth, Certain molecules combined to form particularly large and intricate structures called organisms. The story of organisms is called biology. About 70,000 years ago, organisms belonging to the species Homo sapiens started to form even more elaborate structures called cultures. The subsequent development of these human cultures is called history. Three important revolutions shaped the course of history. The Cognitive Revolution kick-started history about 70,000 years ago. The Agricultural Revolution sped it up about 12,000 years ago. The Scientific Revolution, which got underway only 500 years ago, may well end history and start something completely different. This book tells the story of how these three revolutions have affected humans and their fellow organisms. There were humans long before there was history. Animals much like modern humans first appeared about 2.5 million years ago. But for countless generations, they did not stand out from the myriad other organisms with which they shared their habitat. On a hike in East Africa 2 million years ago, you might well have encountered a familiar cast of human characters. Anxious mothers cuddling their babies and clutches of carefree children playing in the mud. Temperamental youths chafing against the dictates of society and weary elders who just wanted to be left in peace. Chest-thumping machos trying to impress the local beauty and wise old matriarchs who had already seen it all. These archaic humans loved, played, formed close relationships and competed for status and power. But so did chimpanzees, baboons and elephants. There was nothing special about humans. Nobody, least of all humans themselves, had any inkling that their descendants would one day walk on the moon, split the atom, fathom the genetic code, and write history books. The most important thing to know about prehistoric humans is that they were insignificant animals with no more impact on their environment than gorillas, fireflies, or jellyfish. Biologists classify organisms into species. Animals are said to belong to the same species if they tend to mate with each other, giving birth to fertile offspring. Horses and donkeys have a recent common ancestor and share many physical traits, but they show little sexual interest in one another. They will mate if induced to do so, but their offspring, called mules, are sterile. Mutations in donkey DNA can therefore never cross over to horses or vice versa. The two types of animals are consequently considered two distinct species, moving along separate evolutionary paths. By contrast, a bulldog and a spaniel may look very different, but they are members of the same species, sharing the same DNA pool. They will happily mate, and their puppies will grow up to pair off with other dogs and produce more puppies. Species that evolved from a common ancestor are bunched together under the heading genus plural genera. Lions, tigers, leopards and jaguars are different species within the genus Panthera. Biologists label organisms with a two-part Latin name, genus followed by species. Lions, for example, are called Panthera leo, the species leo of the genus Panthera. Presumably everyone listening to this book is a Homo sapiens, the species sapiens, wise of the genus Homo, man. Genera in their turn are grouped into families, such as the cats, lions, cheetahs, house cats, the dogs, wolves, foxes, jackals. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?